Well, I've got an IC735 on the bench like that. And not long ago in the mail came this, which seems to be the original keyer for an ICOM 735. So we're gonna make the best of the fact that the manual has just that much information. So that's the entire instruction sheet for putting in a keyer in a 735. They tell you, basically put it in and connect two connectors and use it. And the key to where it is is in the corner of the PA unit. So we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna pull off the screws. I'm using some fancy number two Phillips that Milwaukee makes. So hopefully none of the screws will get abused in the process. And I'm only gonna use this to take them out and not put them back. But in the interest of speed, we'll do it this way. And this number two fits these screws really, really nicely. So I think it'll turn out to be a good choice. And if it's easy, as easy as they say, I'm surprised I couldn't find any videos where somebody actually successfully put a keyer in one of these. There were a lot of videos about how to put in filters, which is also interesting, but didn't help. So I think that might be it. I don't know if these do anything, probably not. But we'll take them out just the same. Okay, let's see what we have. And if you're wondering about my wrist, I scratched it up and the wife did a fine bandage job on us. It looks like I might die. <laughs> we have some case movement, that's good. Looks like the speaker might actually have to have its speaker screws removed. That would be a surprise. But I think that's true. Yeah, I don't see any lifting going on without that, so we'll try. And if you hear a clunk, that would be the speaker dropping inside if these screws don't need to come out. All right, let's see if that's better. Oh, that's a lot better. So there we go. So that gives us the PA unit, but I don't see a hole in the PA unit like the picture had. So if you look again, they say PA unit, and they show the fins, I think. So that must mean that it's under the PA unit, even though it looks like there is a square hole for it. So they don't show the speaker, they don't show much. They do show, let's see if we put it in the same orientation. This is the power jack over here. That doesn't look like that. So I don't really know. but I'm pretty sure that it's not the other side of the radio since they show it in the top corner. That's my only frame of reference. And I don't know how easy this comes out. It looks like it could be two screws, we'll see. Beginning to lift, that's good. And it's got tape on the side. 
Those are seem to be already loose. Looks interesting, like it maybe it swivels. It does, and we have a few cables in there. And I think this must be the this could be the magic recess where the keyer goes. Let's see what that looks like. We'll let that close. There's nothing on the other side of that, so that might be it. We'll see if the screws line up. So coincidentally, it has three screws and that hole in there seemed to be three screws. So let's see if we lift the hood here. That is three screws. And looks like it sets in there pretty nicely. So because there are only two connectors on it, they tell you to remove one connector that's existing and install another one. So let's just see. So there's a connector here we can take out so we don't break anything. That is blue, red and green going to multicolors of purple, white and black. Then there's one connector up on the main board. So I'll pull that. And that gives us more space. Then we get a small screwdriver. And let's just see if this would be a hood prop here. Like, looks like it would. So I'll put that in that screw and then we'll find the shortest screwdriver I have. It certainly does look right. It fits right in there. And the screws fit. And also, if you're wondering, the, the ICOM 735 manual that I found was, to me, an unlikely place. The... Uh, URL is SBO for sailboatowners.com. So it's sbo.sailboatowners.com is where the ICOM 735 manual I found was. And it actually says, let's see, that we should... Oops, lost my page. So we want section 4.1. That's 5.3. Or two. Okay, there's four one. And it says that we should install the unit in the position shown. So we did that. And then unplug P27, which is presently connected to J23 on the PL unit. So let's see if we can find something in. J23 on the PL unit. So we'll turn this upside down or right side up. Then I will look for J23 on the PL unit. I'm going to 
to swat, swap out the glasses to see what we can see, and I'll see if I can get you a better look. There's our view. We're going to find... There's J15. A little more light. See, the J numbers are on the back. Well, there's J23. That's good. That's the one. So we're supposed to take P27 in J23 and connect P27 to J1 on the keyer unit. All right, that's pretty long. So we'll back up a little bit for you here. And we're supposed to connect that to J1 on the keyer unit and it is keyed, so we'll do that. That works. And coincidentally, there's a connector with it. Plug the four pin connector 28 into J2, which is conveniently tied together, so I'll hook that up. Oops, turn that over. Okay, we got that, that snapped in. Now we can reconnect our other two connectors that we removed to get access. And that is this one, which doesn't have any numbers, but it's the colors we were dealing with. That one snapped in. And then we'll put back connector that I pulled was J was in J9 so I'll put that back I have to close it up a little for that and that snapped in so so far nothing has broken push that out of the way and it looks like we can close the hood So then, we get the two small countersunk screws for the heatsink area. Like that. And just to make sure we didn't close a screwdriver inside. This connector looks like it should be in a better place. That works. All right, then we get the number two Phillips. And I think we can test it. Okay, that's good. So we're already into this for 14 minutes. So let me work out some power and I'll come back and I'll give you a part two. We'll put the cover on it so you don't have to wait for that. And I'll get the power and the antenna out and we'll see if we can do some automatic CW with the new keyer. So thanks for watching.